Hey there everybody, welcome to another episode of Black Pack Homestead. Today, on this episode, Lord of the Quail episode, I'm talking quail. You may be asking, what are those in that little pool running around down in there? Well, those are my little baby quail, and they're about two weeks old, and they're fixing to fly. Which means in approximately uh, now, I've got to put the net on top of the pool so the little baby birds don't fly all now. Um, they're so cute and so easy. You just have their little food and water and heat in there, and they're, they're good to go, guys. Uh, don't ever think that you can't do this, because you can do it. I'm telling you, if Morella can do it, you can do it too. Morella has got some major problems, and uh, other than that, you know, she she pushes through it. She does it. She's a tiger. They're loving. And they're so sweet. They're not like chickens where they'll have their own little personalities. I mean, they may, but for the most part, they look the same. You know, and a lot a lot of people struggle with that and being able to, you know, dispatch their own food source. And they're like, I don't understand. I don't understand how you can, you know eat these little guys and my thing is you don't jump into homesteading you understand why you're doing it you you differentiate between your livestock and you can love your guys your brood everybody loves their animals I mean you don't ever think that people that do this don't love their animals but um yeah we do it because we like knowing where our food comes from and I I hope you all understand that uh, it's nice to just have a source of meat uh, in case you know things like this go on like we're going on throughout the world right now um, but I just I just want to tell you guys I love the quail guys I love the quail the quail are, are amazing little creatures and I'd have to say that they've been pretty much the workhorse of this farm that's going on right now. They do eat a lot. They eat a lot of food. They require a higher protein than most birds. Um, if you got a good 21%, you're okay. You know, the higher the better. But I believe I use a super breeder. It sits about 21%. But it's good feed. And it's I've never had a problem with it. Everything's came out good. Um, yeah. Everything is good. Life is good here on the farm. For vlogist. Vlogist. Blah, blah, vlogist. I'll get that right eventually. I'm going to leave that in there for you guys. What can I tell you about these little guys? Well, the specific variety that I have here is Coternix quail. They're a Japanese variety. They are actually very, very prolific. Uh, you wouldn't think these little guys would produce the way they do, but they're the rabbits of the bird world I guess uh, you'd only need a few of them for you know one or two people really uh, what I got going on here I, I do for meat production as well as eggs but the eggs primarily and well what can I tell you about them let's see first of all incubation period is only 17 days 17 days for these little guys they uh, you know, you put your incubator about 99.5 and let them sit. In the last three days, you don't turn them or anything. In a matter of from hatching to, mm, let's say, two weeks, they start to fly at two weeks. So you want to keep your guys uh, covered. You want a low area for them to be. It, it keeps them from wanting to jump up. In a matter of three weeks, they're feathered out, and you can take them and place them place them outside if weather permits. Uh, a few weeks after, about six weeks, you start seeing your eggs. And at about nine weeks, you can harvest. I tend to rotate my guys out uh, once a year or so and keep the new generation in. And uh, have 
my area here, right here, for my eggs, and I grow my other guys out for meat purposes. In a matter of nine weeks, definitely they're ready to go. If you wait any longer than that, you do get a bigger bird, but you also get a tougher bird. The meat, the meat itself, is a lot like turkey, but more turkey than, it's how turkey should be. It's like more turkey than turkey, if that makes any sense to you. If you're a dark meat lover, it's right up your alley. It's something that you'll really, really, really enjoy. Uh, you wouldn't think these little guys have as much meat on them as they do. And uh, you'll get to eating on one and it's like, man, these little guys, you just keep finding it and finding it. And when you're done, all you'll have is these little bones. And that's it. It's primarily a lot of meat. No, no meat on the wings, a little bit on the legs, but it's all in the chest. And uh, these guys here are not like chickens. They're... They're more like ground birds. More like ground birds. <clears throat> they are a lot of fun. But, uh... These guys don't have the personality quite that a, a chicken would have. They are more like, they'll walk by and be like, hey, what's up, you know? What's going on? And a chicken, you know, they'll, they're friendly. They'll run up on you. You can ham feed them and stuff. And you can do these guys the same way. These guys are super tame. They've been bred that way. And uh, I can see why, well, I'm sure they weren't originally like that thousands of years ago. But they've been bred to be the way they are. You really, really can't beat the quail guys. I'm telling you. If I, if I had to only keep one homestead animal, it would be the quail. Because the quail is the bomb. It's the bomb. Yeah. Cool. Um, I hope. I really, really hope you enjoyed this episode of Black Pack Homestead, and learning a little bit about the quail. Uh, give it a try, guys. It's something you will enjoy. You'll enjoy it, and they're such a blessing. Yeah, I mean, you just really, really can't beat the quail. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless y'all. Until next time. Bye-bye.